For this project, the first thing you're going to do is pick out the, your favorite towel that you want to use or gift or use for yourself. What's fun about these towels is you can use coffee cups to go with the gift or you can pick oven mitts that match. Here's a fun one. Once you've decided what kitchen towel you want to use for your crochet project, then you want to match the colors of the yarn and what style of yarn that you want for the towel topper. I'm using, I love this cotton. I like this yarn. It also has a free pattern usually included with it. Here's some more information on the yarn. It's 100% cotton. This color is aqua. I'm also, this is also, I love this cotton. The only difference between the two yarns is this one has a metallic glitter through it that I'm going to use for the flower. So it has a glittery metallic strip through the yarn. And this is just the regular yarn without the metallic strip. I picked this color because it matches the blue on the kitchen towel. You can match the burgundy color of the fox if you wanted to or even the green the emerald green for the trees whatever color or even brown for the trees or white whatever color that blends with the kitchen towel you can use as the kitchen towel topper for this kitchen towel I picked the orange in the L so this is also I love this cotton but it's more of an orange color that matches the orange in the L but you could use any of the colors like yellow, a light blue. For this crochet project you're going to need a tapestry needle, preferably one with a sharper end point for your embroidery stitch. I'm using my J or 6 millimeter crochet hook and also a pair of scissors. The first thing you want to do is fold your towel so that you have the portion that you want showing. On mine, there's a fold at the top already in place and you can see it on the other side. I'm going to use that fold. If, you don't, if yours doesn't line up the way you want it, meaning that the front is a little short and the back shows and you want more of the front to hang over, then you can take an iron and iron a fold so you can follow it with your embroidery stitch. Mine, I'm happy with the fold where it is, so I'm going to keep that fold and that's where I'm going to place my embroidery stitch. The first thing you're going to do is place the color, the main color of your yarn, onto your tapestry needle. Place a lot of it on there because we're going to make our embroidery stitch. Then you're going to take the right side up Make sure that the right side is facing up and you can see where my fold is. I'm going to be working straight along the fold. So I'm going to come up through the kitchen towel from the wrong side. Now on mine there's a little fold where they sewed the lining in on the kitchen towel. I'm going just inside of that fold with the tapestry needle. And then you just come up. Make sure that you leave plenty of loose yarn end on the back side for burying into your work. Then you want to take your yarn and bring it over to the side at an angle and hold it with your thumb. Take your tapestry needle and you're going to go right in close to where you came up through the back. Go in with your tapestry needle about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half and come back up through the top. 
Then you're just going to bring the tapestry needle through, making sure that you're coming in through the loop created by the yarn. And then just pull the yarn through the kitchen towel. And you can see how the loop is closing in on the yarn. That's what you want. And then you completed your first embroidery stitch. Now you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're not going to go within the loop that you just completed. You're going to go right outside the loop. Make sure you go keep the yarn at an angle. So you have the yarn off at an angle. You're going to take your tapestry needle. You're going to go outside the loop that you just created. So you're outside the loop. Go down into the kitchen towel. Then you're going to come up about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half. And you're going to repeat going within the loop that you create. And then just pull the yarn through the kitchen towel just like you did before. Close the loop around the yarn. And I just completed my second embroidery stitch. And you're going to do that, repeat that all the way across to along the fold to the opposite side of your towel, right down the center of your towel. I'm going to create one more with you. This is what mine looks like so far. You can see how I have an embroidery stitch going right down the center of my kitchen towel. Then when I reach all the way across to the end, I have my last embroidery stitch in place. I'm going to take my tapestry needle and just go right outside the loop because if you go inside the loop it's just going to undo your embroidery stitch. So you just go right just outside of the loop down into the back part of the blanket. Then you're going to take the wrong side of the blanket and we're going to tie a knot. The first thing that I do is just weave. You can tie a knot here by going through one of the back stitches and then go through the loop and tie a knot. Then I go through the next one. And if you want it really secure, you can tie a knot there too. This one I'm going to go through twice. And you can do as many as you want. I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to cut the loose yarn end. Then you can see how my work looks. I went far enough into the middle of the towel where I can leave a little bit of a loose yarn end that no one's going to see. Then you bury the loose, yen, ugh, loose yarn end on the opposite side the exact same way. Now you're going to want to have the right side facing you because we're going to fold the work the way you want your towel to hang and place the kitchen towel topper at the top, the crochet towel topper. I'm going to fold the towel the way I want the front to show. And then on the back side Usually, I'll have the two ends meet in the middle, middle, just like this. 
Then you are ready to take your crochet hook and again I have my J or six millimeter crochet hook. I'm going into the top right corner embroidery stitch go through both loops you also want to grab the back embroidery stitch and you're going to grab both loops of that back embroidery stitch then you're going to take your yarn the skein of yarn the main color and then just grab the yarn with your crochet hook and bring it through both embroidery stitches. Make sure you leave a long enough loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then you're going to take and chain one. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring it through the loop for a chain. Then you can tie a knot. We're not going to bury the loose yarn end because I'm going to bring it into the center of the kitchen towel and bury it that way. So you're just going to let the loose yarn end hang for now. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the next stitch over. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, grab the embroidery stitch on the front of the towel as well as the embroidery stitch on the back of the towel. And notice how I'm going through both loops, the front loop and back loop of both the front stitch and the back stitch. Then I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring up a loop through both stitches. Then I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. So I just made a single crochet, and I'm going to make two single crochet in every stitch across. I'm going to go back in the same stitch. I'm going to bring up a loop and complete a single crochet. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both. And I just finished two single crochet into the same stitch. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch Grab, making sure that I grab both loops of the embroidery stitch. Now I'm going to go into the back embroidery stitch. And again, you just want to make sure you grab both loops of the front of the towel and the back of the towel. And we're joining these two parts of the towel with single crochet stitches. So you bring up a loop so go ahead finish making two single crochet in every stitch across joining the front of the towel to the back folds of the towel. Now I finished one side so on one side, the front of the towel is connected to the back of the towel. I have one stitch that's right in the center. So in that center stitch, I'm just going to use, place two single crochet into the one stitch. Now I'm on the other side and I'm going to connect the second fold in the back. So I'm going to go into the next stitch of the front through to the back stitch, joining the front and the back of the towel with a single crochet. And I'm going to make two single crochet into that same stitch. 
just like I did on the other side. Then you just finish joining the other half. Now I finished crocheting the two pieces together. So I have the front and the back now connected with the single crochet to the embroidery stitch. For beginners I would recommend counting your stitches. So I'm going to show you how to count your stitches with my tapestry needle. So here I'm putting my tapestry needle through the two loops of the first stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So it doesn't matter if yours doesn't match up exactly like mine at this point but just to give you an idea how many stitches that I have at the top of my towel. Now, after you finish your last single crochet on the opposite end, you're going to make a chain of one. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your first chain one. Then turn your work so that the back is facing you and we're going to work back across. And here, where it kind of upslopes a little bit beneath your chain one, you're not going to work into this stitch. You're going to work into the next stitch over. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, making sure to go through both loops of the previous row single crochet. Bring up a loop. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across. So just one single crochet in every stitch back across. Now you can see that I'm reaching the end. I'm going to work the last stitch, stitch, few stitches with you. I'm going into my next stitch. I want my stitches to reach the end of the towel, so I'm going to keep going until I've reached the end of the towel. and now I'm ready to move up to the next row. And I had 24 stitches on that second row of single crochet. Now I'm going to make my final row of single crochet. So to move up to the next row you're going to chain one and again you're going to turn your work. Now I have the front of the towel facing me again. I'm not going to be working into the base stitch of that initial chain one. I'm going to go into the next stitch over just like we did on the previous row. And then I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch across. This will be our last row of one single crochet. On the next row I'm going to be showing you how to make the half double crochet. Now, I just completed my last row of single crochet and for the beginners, make sure that you count. You're going to count that first chain one. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, twenty-four. 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. So I still have 24 stitches, which is what you should not have the same number of stitches that you had for the previous row on yours. Now to move up to the next row we're not going to make a chain one for this one. You're just going to turn your work. So after you finish that last single crochet 
just turn your work and then we're going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch over. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into the next stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make a one half double crochet in every stitch back across. I'm going to do, make a couple of them with you. So go ahead, finish making one half double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So now I'm towards the end. I have a couple of stitches left. I actually have three stitches left. The last stitch is a little bit harder to see. I'm just going to be working into the last two stitches. So now I have a total of 22 stitches because I left the last stitch unworked. So, and then I didn't create an initial stitch. So I took one stitch off this side and one stitch off this side, leaving me with two less stitches, which should be the same for yours. You should have two less stitches than you had in the previous row. This is what my work looks like so far. And we completed one row of half double crochet. Now for the second row, you're just going to, we just finished our last half double crochet on that row. You're just going to turn your work. So just turn your work over. And again, I have the front facing me. And again, I'm going to go into the next stitch over making a half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into the next stitch over and make my half double crochet. And again, I'm going to make a half double crochet in every stitch back across. So I just finished that second row of half double crochet and I ended up with 20 stitches because I didn't work into the last stitch. So I basically took off one stitch here and one stitch here. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a little bit of an angle. So it's coming in at a gradual angle towards the center. So I have two less stitches than I had on my previous row. Then we're going to make our last row of half double crochet. So again, you're just going to turn your work. Now I have the back facing me, the back of the kitchen towel. And again, I'm going to go into the next stitch over. So I'm not going to chain at all. I'm going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch over, just like I did for the previous two rows. And this will be our last row of half double crochet, one half double crochet in every stitch. And then I'm going to help I'm going to show you how to make a double crochet. So our next row will be a double crochet. So I just finished my last half double crochet and I ended up with 18 stitches, so two less than my previous row. Then again, you're just going to turn your work. I have the front of my kitchen towel facing me. You're going to start similar to how you did the last, the previous row. You're going to work into the next stitch over. So you're going to yarn over. 
go into the next stitch over, you're going to bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, but this time what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through only two of the loops. You have two loops remaining. You yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the remaining two loops to complete a double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to make one more with you. Go ahead, complete one double crochet in every stitch, back across, and then come back. This is what my row of double crochets look like, and I completed 16 stitches, so just like my previous row, it's two less stitches. Then I'm going to turn my work so that the back is facing me, and you're going to repeat. So I'm going to yarn over go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make my double crochet, and complete another row of one double crochet in every stitch back across. You can see how my fingers, how I'm holding my fingers as well. So I just finished my last double crochet and I have 14 stitches, which is two less than what I had in my previous row. I'm going to turn my work over. Now you can see the different stitches, what they look like. Here you could see the single crochet is a smaller stitch, half double crochet, a little bit longer stitch, and then the double crochet, which is even longer. Now I'm going to go back to the shorter stitch, the single crochet, until I have the size that I want for the strap for the kitchen towel topper. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to go into the next stitch over just like we did before. You're going to bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. I just finished 12 stitches. I'm going to turn my work over. I'm going to make another row of one single crochet in every stitch. I'm going to go into the next stitch over and I'm going to make another row of one single crochet in every stitch. I just finished 10 stitches of one single crochet in every stitch. Turn my work and make another row of one single crochet in every stitch. So I went into the next stitch. You could see the angle this is creating at the top of the kitchen towel. I just finished eight stitches of one single crochet in every stitch, turning my work. And again, next stitch over for a single crochet in every stitch across. I just finished one single crochet in every stitch and I have six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the si size that I want for my strap, six stitches. You could make one more turn for four stitches for your strap, depending on how wide you want your strap for your kitchen towel topper. But for mine, I'm gonna stick with a six stitch width 
for my strap for the kitchen towel topper. So now I'm going to turn my work. Actually first, before you, I turn my work, I'm going to make the strap of the kitchen towel topper in a double crochet stitch because it's a longer stitch. So the first thing I'm going to do before I turn my work is chain three. One, two, three. So that counts as my first double crochet for the next row. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. And now I'm going to work into the next stitch over. So you can see the little bit of an upslope at the base of the first chain three. You're not going to work there. You're going into the next stitch over. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, You're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So that's my third. Fourth. Fifth. and sixth. So you can see that I have six double crochets. Then I'm going to chain three. Turn my work. And then make my next row of double crochet. And you should always have six stitches now because you want the edges to be straight on the strap of the kitchen towel topper. So this is my second stitch, double crochet. And you're going to repeat this pattern for the rest of the kitchen towel topper strap. And you need to make sure that you have six stitches for each row now. And you can see how you have a straight edge now. Unlike the bottom of your kitchen towel topper where you are taking away a stitch on each end and forming a triangular top. For mine, I made five rows. One, two, three, four, five rows of double crochet for the strap at the top of your kitchen towel topper. Then you're going to make a crochet of chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I made a chain of eight. This is going to be for the buttonhole or the, the hole for the rose to go around the rows as a button. You're going to take and go into the top of that first chain three that you made with your crochet hooks. So you're going to go back across to the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. So you can see how you're forming a loop at the top of the strap. Then you're going to take and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops on your hook. So go through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you can finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop. Pull enough yarn through to bury the loose yarn end into your work. And now you have the loop for going around the button or the rose. To bury your loose yarn end, take your tapestry needle, place the loose yarn end through the tapestry needle, and then I'm going to weave it through my work.
just take and weave the loose yarn end through the work and then I like to go back across and just make sure that it's buried completely in the work and then once you've buried it then you can take and cut the end of the loose yarn end. This is what mine looks like so far. You can see the triangular shaped edges along the sides of the towel and then the straight edges of the strap and then the buttonhole that will go around the button or the rows. I'm going to show you how to make the rose if you like the rose. For my rose, I'm using my yarn that has the glittery metal strip through it. This is from 100%. This is 100% cotton from I love this cotton yarn. I'm going to take the end, fold it over on itself to form a loop, then take my crochet hook, go through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. You just pull on that loose yarn in and cinch the yarn around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of five. Then you're going to take your crochet hook go into the first stitch that you made then you can hold the chain in a U shape just take your thumb and hold that bottom part you can take that loose yarn in and move it then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and you just created a circle with your chain. Then you can chain one, take your crochet hook, go into the center of the circle. You're going to bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, Three. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the center of the circle again. So you're going to go into the center of the circle, you're going to bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you just completed your first chain three loop. That's where you're going to create your petals. So we completed one, we're going to make a total of five of them. So chain three, one, two, three, single crochet into the center of the circle for your second chain three loop, and repeat until you have five. I'm going to make one more with you. So, so far I have three chain three loops, one, two, three. Go ahead and finish completing five of these chain three loops and then come back. So, so far I have one, two, three, four, five chain three loops. Now I'm going to make a chain of three again. One, two, three. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain that we created. So I'm going to take my crochet hook and go in that first chain that I made. I'm going to make a slip stitch, so I'm going to yarn over and turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Now you should have a total of six chain three loops. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the first chain three loop, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, then you're ready for your first petal. So I'm going to make two half double crochet, so yarn over, go into the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through all three loops for a half double crochet. So that's one, two. Now I'm going to make two double crochet. So yarn over, go in the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two for a double crochet. So make one more double crochet in the same chain three loop. Now I'm going to make two half double crochet in the same chain three loop. Then I'm going to make a single crochet in the same chain three loop. And you just finished your first petal. And you're going to make six of these petals, one in each of your chain three loops, and then you're going to come back. I'm going to make one more petal with you. So I'm going into my next chain three loop. Make a single crochet, two half double crochet, two double crochet, two half double crochet. and a single crochet. And I just finished my second petal. I just finished my last petal. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six petals around my flower. One in each of the chain three loops. So after I finish my last single crochet and my last petal, now what we're going to do is we're going to make petals around the center spokes of the flower. So we're going to take our crochet hook and for your first one you can see how it's kind of split. I'm going to go right down the center around this spoke with my crochet hook for one and then this is my second spoke for two, three, four, five, six and then I'm going to go ahead and make one more spoke around, I mean petal around this last one. If you wanted to, you could go around both of these and just make one. But like I said, I'm going to go right down the center and create two spokes for this one. So I'm going to take my crochet hook, I'm going to go right down the center around my first spoke. I'm going to bring up a loop I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain two. One, two. Then I'm going to go around my second spoke. So I'm going to go around to my next spoke, go behind it with my crochet hook, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And I just completed my first chain two loop around the center of my flower. Now I'm going to chain two, one, two, go around my next spoke 
for a single crochet. And I finished my second chain two loop. So go ahead, finish making chain two loops all around the center, around your spokes of the middle of your flower, and then come back. So here, I just finished, so far I have five chain two loops around the center. Now I'm going to come around to the center of my first spoke, complete my sixth chain two loop. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six chain two loops. Now I'm going to take my crochet hook and go into the center of my first chain two loop and make a single crochet. Then I'm going to make one half double crochet. one double crochet one half double crochet and one single crochet and then I just finished one smaller petal on the inside of the flower and you're going to make this each of the inner petals in each of the chain two loops, I'm going to make one more with you. So I'm going to go into my next chain two loop for a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. single crochet. And you're going to repeat this all the way around back to where you started and then come back. I'm back to where I started. You can see what my rose looks like so far. Then just take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the first single crochet of your first petal. We're going to make a slip stitch you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And I'm using this glittery metallic 100% cotton yarn for the other flower. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the flower onto your kitchen towel topper. I like to put a pearl in the center of the flower so you can buy some pearls at the craft store. Just make sure that you can use regular sewing needle and thread like a um, same colored thread as your flower that you're using or I like to use yarn to sew mine on so I get a tapestry needle that will fit through the center of the pearl with the yarn. So if you're going to be using yarn to sew your pearl onto the flower, make sure you have the right sized hole for the center of the pearl that a tapestry needle will fit through. And then you can use a DMC yarn threader to help you thread the yarn. I'm going to show you how to do that. Thread the yarn through the center of the eye of your tapestry needle. Now if you wanted to, you could just sew this flower onto your kitchen towel topper, but for mine, I'm going to put a pearl right in the center. I'm going to use my loose yarn end that I left for sewing. I'm going to get the right size tapestry needle that will fit through my pearl. I'm going to take my DMC yarn threader, put it right through the hook, right through the eye of your tapestry needle, hook your yarn, bring the hook back through the eye of the tapestry needle. The easiest way that I found to do this is to move your DMC yarn threader up and down and then just pull the yarn through. Then you just take
the purl. You're going to take your tapestry needle and thread the yarn through the center of the purl. But first, let me take the purl off. First you want to take, sometimes the metal strip will come undone when you feed it through. That's normal and that won't affect it. So just take your tapestry needle and you want to weave the loose yarn end toward the center where you want to place the pearl. So you want the pearl in the center of the flower. You can take, if you do have a little bit of me the metal strip, you can cut that if you need to. Then you're going to want to thread on the pearl. You're going to want to make sure that the pearl is centered in the center of the flower and you can just sew it in place with your tapestry needle. Cinching the center of the flower around the pearl. I'm just going in and out sewing the pearl in place. I only went through the center of the pearl once and then I'm just sewing it in place in the center of the flower by going in and out around the pearl. Sewing the center of the rose around the pearl. Then I can take the rest of my yarn and sew the rose in place onto the kitchen towel topper. And it just makes a pretty centerpiece for your rose. You can sew your rose wherever you want to place it onto your kitchen towel topper. Just make sure that you have enough room on the strap for hanging onto your oven. For my rose, I went on the first row of double crochets and sewed it in place. Just take your tapestry needle and you just go in and out around the center spokes of the flower only and just sew it in place. And then when you're done, just tie a knot on the back of the kitchen towel topper and then bury your loose yarn ends. This is what mine looks like after I'm finished. And then on the other side, you can see how I hid the loose yarn ends, just burying them. You can see how I buried some of the loose yarn ends in the center here where no one can see them. Then you just take your buttonhole, you squeeze your flower through the strap and the buttonhole, and then your rose will act as a button holding your kitchen towel topper strap in place.